joined by Coach Cal Perry. Please use the raised hand feature and we'll open it straight to questions. John Hill, go ahead. Now, obviously, the injuries play a part, but what do you make of the defense the last four or five games and uh, maybe wasn't what is the same as you all were doing most of the season? Um, people are breaking us down a little bit on the bounce and we're not uh, covering it as well. And it's at a couple positions. And the great thing about this game is um, if you have a weakness out there, the other team's going to exploit it. So we're working on individuals and we're working on some team stuff. But I come back to this to you guys. The teams we're playing right now in this league I don't understand why we're not talking to eight teams in our league, including Florida, who beat Auburn. Uh, well, uh, they're 500 in your league. or they're one What? Well, what does that mean? Well, in another league, wait a minute, we're the best league. Then no one should get a 500 team in. Why would that be? I mean, Florida beat Ohio State. So... I don't get all this, but the teams we're playing are really good, which is why I come back to 75 to 80 points. You score 75 to 80, even if we struggle some defensively, that should be enough. The whole point of this is winning. Carol Bird. Yeah, John, you've talked on occasions this year about that 30% of your shots are going to be from three-point range. I'm kind of so a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on the game. How do you kind of settle on that philosophy that, you know, if it's 20% of the end year, that's not enough. If it's 40, that's maybe too high. Where's that middle ground? How did that develop for you? Just how we you go through the years and you say, okay, over my however many years I coached, uh, you, know, you know, I'm 52 now, so I've coached a long time. But what you end up doing is, you look at the stats historically, and they've been about the same. Um, field goal percentage has gone from 50 to between 50 and 41. We've had teams that shot 41%, yet won 26, 27 games. Um, Three-point field goal percentage has hovered between 31 and 38. Um, it's It's gone from a team shooting 27, 26% to... 32, 33%. So, you know, you you play the game to win. What I know, the staples of a winning team start on defense, and it's team defense, and it's guarding the ball, and it's low field goal percentage, high rebound averages. And then on offense, it becomes, again, uh, what kind of – balance do you have in my mind instead of one or two guys averaging 25 how about we get five or six guys averaging double figures with the leading score getting 16 or 17 that's been a formula for us again over 30 some years 40 years that's worked and it's been good for the players so not only do you win at a high level um the players succeed at a high level I know you, you talked about, you know, an alibi for anybody. So uh, excuses, but how much do you think just sort of the continuity get, getting to the fact that your two best perimeter defenders were in and out, out for a couple games, disrupted sort of the, the, what you had going most of the season defense. Well, you can look at it the other way. We found out that Davion may be our best defender and could do it for 40 minutes if he had to, um, that Kellen is a better defender and a ball handler than we thought he was. Um, um, but, you know, I, I think, again, when you look, who's getting beat on the bounce, and how do we improve those guys? Uh, I've had guys before where when they their man catches the ball, we accept the fact that they can't move their feet, and we yell red. Red means... Everybody in, help this man before he gives up another layup. And and so you challenge the guy, look, we're here for you, but stay in front. And uh, I think guys are working at it. We'll see going forward. 
Um, if I have to do some more things and scramble up a little bit, we'll try that. But let me tell you, the worst thing I did today is I watched Florida Auburn down in Florida. Sure, why do I do that before we play a team? I mean, they they played smart. They played tough. They rebounded. They flew. They ran their stuff, had great spacing, and beat a really, really good team. Um, so as much as I'm worried about this, I'm worried about let's worry about playing our best both offensively and defensively, giving yourselves a chance to win on the road. Yeah, uh, not really follow-up, but another question. You've talked, you talk a lot every year about empowerment. When you look out there at the end of the year and you see your team, you say, okay, they are, they, they get it. And is this team there yet? Yeah, because yeah, they're, be- they're uh, I'll give you what Kellen did at the end of the last game, walked up to me and said, coach, you got to get Davion out so he can get his applause. And I looked, I said, you're right. Bang, we got him out. Um, you have in huddles, guys speaking up, not afraid, um, you know, talking to each other, talking to me. Um, am I ready to just sit down and watch them? I think I got to help them a little bit, but it's not where we were at the beginning of the year. They get it. And I got a really smart team. They're really smart. Um, you know, you, you're talking about a team that they can talk to each other. They don't need a board. They they know when they say something to each other what they're talking about. You, you, you talk about every game being a Super Bowl for the opponent, and I've asked some of the other people, how, how challenging is that for your guys to play 20-some Super Bowls in a season? Well, it, it's – It's hard, but let me say this. What's more rewarding knowing you're getting the other team's best and you still win? And I'll say this. The the second thing it does, um, we know when another team plays their best how we have to play because we've done it all year. And I believe it gets us ready for March. And and teams play well in our building. It's a big game to come to Ruff. I mean, come on now. You're talking Mississippi, and you're telling me they're the 12th best team in our league? Well, then how good is our league? They got a seven-footer. They had a guard that scored 25, and they got two players out that are injured. I mean, I come back to um, – it, it just disappoints me when I'm, I'm not here and they should get eight teams in. They should have eight teams. And there's, you know, well, what about oh, – okay, if we're the best league. Forget about all this, we'll conference this and that. We're the best league. That's what should be happening. And I'm anxious to see our top four teams. Are they all in different regions? They should be. Why wouldn't they be in a different region? All four of the top teams. And so he had three of the top four in the same region. No, that's what that's what what and then everybody's got a question. Are these a bunch of guys with cigars in a room smoking, saying this is what we're going to do to this and this, and we're going to do this and this? That's why I keep saying the transparency where we pushed, give us the top 16 teams early. So you, if someone wins out, you can't say, yeah, they moved down. Can't do it. You've already given it. But there's other things in this. When your league is the best league, your top four teams should be in different regions. It's a given. Do it. No question. And so, like I said, our top four teams, wow. Are they good and are they playing well? Um, and then there's us. We're like hanging out. Like, what What are we right now? Being injured, playing this, going on the road, having our chances. Um, you know, they call it the luck factor. There was a matrix put out about different stuff, and we're in that far corner. We're not at home and not on the road. And then there's other teams on the road. I mean, there's all kind of interesting things out there, not from fan websites, but the talk about it. Now, all I'm saying to my team, everything I've done all year is to prepare you for March. You won't believe this. We're in March right now. Let's see what happens. Hard game down there now. Hard, always is a hard game. Mike's done a great job with his team. Um, 
he, they're going to be prepared. The things we hurt them with up here, I promise you, we won't hurt them with down there. You won't believe this. They watch tape too. And so it'll be, uh, you know, but I, why, why should they have to beat us to get in? I think that's a bunch of crap. I do. Hello, Coach. Hope you're doing well. You mentioned uh, numerous of times how enjoy to coach this team this season. And my question to you is, with the big games ahead of you, what makes this team so good, so effective, and so enjoyable for you to coach? Um, because they're terrific teammates. When when you have players and, and the people around them so into themselves and truly don't know other players' names, they're only concerned about what's happening, it affects your team. When you walk in and you see these players absolutely cheering for the other players, you, you, you understand they get the culture here. The culture, if you want to survive at Kentucky, you got to be about each other. You can't be about yourself or you can't play here. you got to be about each other. And if someone else is playing well, that doesn't infringe on your success. That may challenge you to work harder. But that kind of stuff, walking in practice, I mean – Doc Rivers talked about Tyrese Maxey. And you know what he said? This dude's happy every day because he's comfortable in his own skin. And if someone else has success, he's happy. But he's good in what he's doing. Emmanuel, quickly, they said, there's no one that's ever worked harder. And every time I see him, he smiles at me. I can go right down the line of the guys here. And when you have that, you know, it's you, 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 unless you, you, there's a couple years that you don't, and it's, you know, coming in and every day is like going to the dentist. We haven't had many here in my 13 years. We've had a couple. But, um, you know, this is a fun team who cares about each other, who wants guys that aren't playing as much. They want Lance to do well. They want Damian to do well. They want Bryce to do well. And it, I went to stick someone in the last game, and some the guy he was going in for made a big-time play. And the guy said, leave him in. I can't even remember who it was because it happens all the time. Leave him in. That's what we got going. Hey, John, first of all, I don't think going to the dentist is that bad. But uh, this time of the year, you preach fresh minds, fresh legs. And as a coach, I, I see you expend a lot of energy out there. And you say you're 52. I thought you were only 49. But how... How are you holding up? And even more importantly, how do you hold up during the course of the grind of a long season? Like uh, I, I, I get pretty well set in a schedule um, in what I do every day and how I do it. And I go to bed early. But I will tell you that yes, or Wednesday was a tough day because I had to get up in the morning. You guys know I go to Mass and I was in Philly, so I went to Mass go grab my coffee, go work out, and had to drive an hour and a half to New Jersey north to watch a practice, got back in the car, drove an hour 45 to go see a game, watched that, got back in the car, watched the second half of the 76 or Nick game because I could get there in time. Um, and then I'm in bed by 11. That was a hard day for me, but that was an unusual day for me. Um, but normally I'm on a set schedule of what I do. And a big part of that is what I do in the morning refreshes my, me and, and, and gets my mind right. And then working out, you know, I lift weights and do that. I know you can't tell. Oh, I lift though. You know, um, so you can't really see it. The shirt kind of hides, you know, the, so you can't see it, but, and, and you know, but I, the problem I have is I'm great all day until I eat dinner. And then I eat like I'm going to the electric chair tomorrow. And that's a problem. I wish I could stop, but it's how I grew up, and it is what it is. Your sort of your SEC tournament feelings or conference tournament feelings known in the past. I, I want this is such a, a strange ride like how do you balance wanting to get back click all your guys versus three games in three days seems like the worst possible thing for a team that stay healthy all year and and you know 
because we're the one playing on Sunday, when will they have us playing? If we played on Sunday, that you know we're playing on Thursday, and they'd put us in the Tuesday game if we were four in, they, they would do that last four. So all I would tell you is everything we do, let's play well for us. If that means win, we move on. If that means lose, let's, we're good, let's go. The tournament starts that next weekend. So I've never put a big emphasis on conference tournaments. I never have. Um, we're playing that for the seed. That's why we play it. Now, what's happened, Kyle, by taking that approach? Playing for the seed? Well, well Sunday doesn't matter. Is this, is what's this happened play? to my teams historically at UMass and Memphis and here in the conference tournaments? You get there and it doesn't affect the seeding. Well, you don't follow anything. We've won a bunch of them in the teens because we're not worried about winning them. We're doing it for the seed. But, you know, trying to get kids in that frame of mind, I, you know, I talked to this team yesterday about that. I mean, this game could be the first of that. You know, it's more about seed than anything else at this time of the year. I mean, whatever happens in the game, I don't think it should have much effect. It didn't, Kansas losing to TCU didn't have much of, I mean, it just, all these teams lost on the road didn't have much effect you know, impact. So I would imagine there won't be much impact for us. So you're not worried about playing that way. You're playing to win. Don't worry about losing, just play to win. And then we'll figure out what happens after, you know, forget about the outcome. The outcome is going to be what it is. Let's worry about us. The injuries and being shorthanded played a role, but what have you made of the defense the last four or five games? You all have been giving up more points than we were used to seeing. Uh, I think the biggest thing is we've had some lapses with with scouting and and uh, and being assignment sound. Um, but I think ultimately we, we've guarded at critical times well enough, and that's why we've um, been able to win three of our last four. Uh, but those are definitely things that we've addressed and that, and that we got to clean up. And um, I think more than anything, it's a, there's a tad of discipline that, that we've lacked. Um, you know, if, that, if that's meant getting over a screen a certain way to avoid giving up a shot to um, a capable shot maker or – I'm rotating a certain way on, on defense. There's just been a few lapses each game where I think you take away four or five baskets, which could be eight, 12, 10 points. I think we'd be having a different conversation now, but th they're definitely correctable things. And I think we've, we've showed all year that we've been pretty good on defense. So uh, we just got to tighten up on a couple of things. Tyler Thompson. So, Kellen, as one, is the vet, one of the veterans on this team, you know, it's easy to look ahead to the SEC tournament, the NCAA tournament, but Ford is a bubble team. You know, they still have a chance to make the NCAA tournament, especially if they beat you all. Uh, what are you telling the younger guys on the group to kind of keep them focused heading into Gainesville? Uh, I mean, we all understand that. It's not necessarily something that has to come from me. Uh, the coaching staff has um, articulated what you just uh, described. I mean, they're, they're probably a brink bubble team. They may be, they may have a bid right now, uh, or they may not. So a win against a team like us would would probably solidify their spot. Um, but at the end of the day, it's it's our next game. It's a road game. Um, it's a season finale for the whole SEC. So everybody's gonna. Uh, give each team their best shot, and we expect no less, especially since we're coming to town. So uh, I think it, it's important to consider, but we, we can't get lost in that. We, we have to go and execute our game plan and, and be ready for a challenging road game. Gary Graves. Yeah, um, in, ter in terms of 
uh, I guess your impact on, on this roster, your influence as one of the senior guys, uh, what have you um, really tried to do with, with some of your new teammates um, when you came in and how has Oscar kind of helped that process, um, you know, by, by his presence? Uh, the biggest thing for me is I, I try to do my best um, in leading by example. Uh, I'm not overly vocal, but I, I definitely have, you know, in, in huddles in, in the games and as we're leaving timeouts, uh, I'll try to input my two cents if I think it's um, imperative to the game at, at, at the time. I'm not um, just wasting energy, but, but the biggest thing for me is uh, I think like I've mentioned, I think there is a, a respect for me and, and, and an appreciation for my experience in college. And I think it's up to me to uh, to do right by them and lead by example. And Oscar is is very similar in, in that fashion. I mean, just his effort and how hard he plays, uh, it's, e it's easy to migrate towards his, his energy and his leadership. So uh, I think that's been the biggest thing for, for the two of us and, and for most of our team. Tipton. Yeah, Kellen, uh, Coach Cal and some of the players talk about you guys being uh, the Super Bowl game for the other team, which I imagine it'll be tomorrow, too. How diff how challenging is it to play 20 some Super Bowls in a season? Uh, it's, I'd say it's definitely unique to playing at Kentucky and. Um, but that that's. I mean, that's just a part of, of the grind of playing in the SEC and going on the road. Uh, and I think for the most part, we cherish it and, and we're excited about uh, a challenging opportunity every time it, it presents um, itself to us. So, uh, like I said earlier, tomorrow will be no different and, and we'll be ready for it and prepared. How, how much do you think that could help you guys in the NCAA tournament when every game is for everybody? The Super in, the uh, S in the SEC. SEC. So after Saturday, it's you win or you go home. Um, so the stakes are going to be high, regardless of whether Kentucky is the opponent or not. Um, but we definitely understand the, there's a little added um, – hype and excitement whenever a team plays us and, and they can knock us off. So um, I think the experience of playing in the SEC and what would that be? Was it nine row games, right? Um, nine row games will prepare as well. Chris Dallas. Yeah, Kellen, hope you're doing well. If you look back and in this season, how this team helped you to be a better player and about your shooting ability, how it helped you to be a, the real Kellen Green from your perspective so far and what you see so far in the season? How has this season helped me become a better yes. player? Um, yes. I, I mean, I think for starters, playing in arguably the best conference in the country and, and having some success doing it, I think has... Uh, helped my my overall game and and um has definitely helped me uh become a better player and, and then playing on a really good team and, and having the pressure of every game being a, a big game home or away um and and you know we, we've had some uh some really big wins where you know i've been on the court for a lot of it so i think just the the, the overall experience at being in Kentucky and playing through the season, I think has 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 helped me. And the pressure that uh, everybody get uh, that you have about the games, about wins, how how help you? How how do you deal with that pressure? Uh, I'm not sure there's a exact way uh, that, that we that we all deal with it, but I mean, there's a level of getting used to it, and and. Um, it's all about keeping things in perspective, I think. I mean, at the end of the day, those big games are our next game on the schedule. And we approach every game, um, and we try to approach every game with the same level of concentration and and with an end goal in mind, which is to win the game. So uh, I think 
our coaches do a good job channeling outside noise. We always talk about avoiding the clutter and uh, keeping the main thing the main thing, which is playing for Kentucky and, and playing for our fans and, and, and trying to stay focused on that. Larry Vaughn. Kellen, just want to go cool. back and look at, at the senior night game. Looked like you got kind of emotional a time or two early in the game and after the game and all. So just looking back, what was that like for you and your family? So I keep hearing these rumors that I, that I teared up or that I may have shed a few, which did not happen. Um, but I mean, it was definitely an, an exciting night and amazing to be with my, with my parents and, and to play in front of Rupp one last time. Um, so I guess the natural emotions that come with uh, an experience like that and, and, and a senior night uh, and just seeing the, our home crowd appreciate both Davion um, and me was was special. Uh, but I had to refute the, the rumors of, of me tearing up. Uh, Even though there might be some pictures that would suggest that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd like to see them. So if you um, let them get a hold of those. <laughs> a few people have asked me that, some of my friends, but I'm, uh, I'm denying it. Thanks. Any other questions for Kellen? If not, we'll let him go and get Coach Calipari in here. Thank you all so much.